بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخوة الإسلام عباد الله إن شاء الله we commence with the second speech and the speaker needs no introduction because he's well known to all of the brothers but just in case there's someone here that may be unfamiliar with the brother, then we have Abu Ayyash, Abdul Hafid, the Imam of Mashid Mukbil, and he will be speaking on the topic, who is Mahmoud Al-Haddad. This is a very important topic as it relates to the issue that we're dealing with and how some of this extremism has come to be. So without further ado, then we'd like to turn the mic over to our brother, Hafidhullah. And with that, Tafadl. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru. Inna alhamdulillah, yishuru wa nafusni wa sayyati a'malina. May yahdillah, fala mubadullah, wa may yubbil, fala hadila. Wa asharu la ilaha illallah, wa ahtu la sharika la. Wa asharu anna muhammad al-abduhu wa rasuluh. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدث بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Uh, the subject of the talk, brothers, it was the reclaiming Salafia from Al Haddadiyya, from Haddadiyya. What I like the title. And that title is very, very important. And as the meaning or the, the, the reason for the Muqtamarat, the Dalrat, those seminars and lessons, they should be so as to meet the needs of the people. So sometimes they have them once a month, or maybe twice a month, or maybe three times a month. The objective of it is so as to meet the needs of those people. And this term is being used maybe loosely with some and maybe appropriately with others. Just like other terms have been being used. And hopefully the term is being used appropriately in the right context. But Mal Asaf Shadi, sorry to say that it is being used sometimes out of context. Out of context. And that is Haddadiya. The term Haddadiya is a word, its root comes from an individual whose name is Mahmoud Haddad. That term comes from a person whose name is, who is still living, he is still living, named Mahmoud Haddad. But the point that we want to deal with is the naqad al-minhaj al-haddadiyya. 
It is the criticisms of the Haddadiyya methodology. It is criticisms of the Haddadiyya methodology, not a study of Mahmoud Haddad, rather a brief ta'rif of him. Just a brief meaning of who, uh, explanation of who exactly is this individual. Our concern is, is the criticism of his manhaj. Just as the Ummah of Islam, it is the Ummah that is moderate or in the middle. Between the other nations. Just as the Ahlul Sunnah Jama'at, the mainstream of Islam, they are the ones who are the example of the real Islam. That they are in between the extremes. The extreme excessive and the extreme negligence. They're between the the excessive extremism and the tamir, the watered down, softening, and lacking. وَتَنَطَّعُوا فِي جَانِبٍ مِنْ جَمَانِبَ الدِّينِ وَمِنْ هَذِهِ جَمَاعَاتِ جَمَاعَةِ الْحَدَّاتِ There are groups, there are different groups who are between the two extremes of excessiveness, extremism, with regard to the different angles of the religion. And from these جَمَاعَاتِ is the جَمَاعَةِ الْحَدَّاتِ Some, from them are the جَمَاعَةِ الْحَدَّاتِ Now the person does not have to be a signed up member student of Mahmoud Haddad, to be from his Jama'at. If he shares those ideologies and philosophies from those negatives, from those things that are criticized by the scholars of religion, then he is referred to as Haddadi. He is referred to as Haddadi. Similarly, if a person is saying Qutbi, for example, or saying uh, Ikhwani and other terms that are used in recent times, but they are not the founders of the innovation that they are upon. As for Sayyid Qutub, and him being referred to as a takfiri, a khawarji, he is not the founder of takfir or khawarij. So he's not the founder of that, and he has other problems besides that as well, from his problems and his errors. So these things are attributed to a specific individual sometimes because of the recent times of those people. The reason why I wanted to speak on this is because there are some of the people who are involved in da'wah, they have their platforms, and they have their media, their mediums of giving their da'wah, etc. When I spoke with some of them, they were not aware of Mahmoud Haddad. They thought it was someone like Abu Hassan al ashariya from the history in the history of Islam, hundreds of years ago, that the term was being used from that. And I told him that this individual is still living. This individual is Egyptian and he's still living and he was living in Medina before he was kicked out of Medina. So he was surprised at that. So I thought that that was a suitable subject to deal with. The Ta'rif of Haddad. So with all of these groups and their extremes, with regard to different areas of the religion of Islam, Jamaat al Haddad, the Ladina Lamyam Babitu, with the Wabat al Minhaj al Salafi fi al Tajri wa Ta'adir. With them, their problem is that they have no regulations with regard to the regulations of the Salaf, the Salafi regulations or methodology in criticizing and praising. With regard to Jamaat al Ta'adir, which was a term that was being also loosely loosely used. Ta'rif of the Haddadin, the Ta'rif of the Haddadin, Tunsub, Hadhi Jama'at ila Mahmoud Haddad. It is attributed to the individual name Mahmoud al Haddad, Nazir Medina Manora Sabitan, Walahu Ba'ad al Tarijat, Wakadamuhu al Bata' al Fatha, Azara Thobeh, Hatta Tabdu. This individual, Mahmoud Haddad, was a person that came to Medina Manoa and was removed therefrom 
And he has certain publications and certain things that he had written with his exposure of the naval. Well, who a that? He is born in, in Egypt. But the Badat had he al Firqa, Awul Ma Badat al Bitta'an, what Tashir al Hafid al Ajr al Asqalani, but Kadadik al Nawi, the Majalisim, if the Da'an were Da'at al Nasi Ila, Tabdirihim, Alaniya to a Kadu Wasalabihim, Al Hal Ila Ta'an fil Alama, then Baz, Wal Fauzan, Wal Alabani Renum. He says, in explaining who this individual was, that this Egyptian individual born from Egypt, he began with his firqa, first and foremostly by cursing and disrespecting the likes of Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, and also Imam al nawi in his gatherings. He started with them, and he called the people to deem them to be innovators. And this announcement was made clear until it reached the state and situation of abusing and disrespecting the likes of Alama bin Bas and the likes of Salih Fawzan and the likes of Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala. وَأَمَّا سَيِّدُّهُمْ And as for their master, Mahmoud al-Haddad, فَإِنَّهُ يَطْعَنْ فِي مَنْ يُوصِي بِكِتَابِ الْعَقِيلَةَ الْوَاسْطِيَةِ وَشَرْحِهِ فَيَقُولْ دَرْجَ الْكَثِيرَ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ الْمُعَاصِلِينَ عَلَى وَصِيَةِ بِالْكِتَابِ الْعَقِيلَةِ الْقَحَاوِيَةِ وَشَرْحَ وَيُنْكَرَ عَلَى شَيْخِ الْأَلْبَانِي تَخْرِيجُهُ لِلْكِتَابِ بِدُونْ تَنْبِيهِ He abused and disrespected the likes of Ibn Baz, the likes of Salih Fawzan, Habibullah Ta'ala, and Albani, and other than them, their master who is Mahmoud al-Haddad, that he cursed. He cursed those people who are the people who are the keepers of the book and the people who distributed the book Aqeed al and its explanation and said that there are many conflicts of Sharia, conflicts of Aqeedah with regard to this book Aqeed al and its explanation he disapproved of that was done by Al-Wali without making a tanbiya and without pointing out. And the mintalaq of Mahmoud Haddad, from those contradictions of Mahmoud Haddad, and who la yira wa la yajiz qira'at al-kutub al-mubtadi'a wa ahl al-bid'a wa al-nawr fiha. From his contradictions that he did not view the permissibility of reading those books of innovation and the people of innovation and to observe and to look into it. He, he did not allow, he did not think that that was permissible. But had that so up, and this is correct. إِلَّا أَنَّ هُنَاكَ فِرْقٍ بَيْنُ مَنْ هُوَ دَعِيَةَ إِلَى الْبِدْعَةِ وَمَقَابِرَةِ فِي الْغَقِ وَبَيْنَ مَنْ وَقَعَ عَنْ إِجْتِهَادِ وَالتَّعْوِيلِ وَهُوَ النَّاصَرْ لِلسُنَّةِ وَالْدِينِهِ وَدِيدَانِهِ السُنَّةِ وَقَادِمْ لِلْكُتِبِ السُنَّةِ بِالصِّدْقٍ That was correct, not to be permissible, the reading of those in the books of innovation and those people of innovation and looking into them. That is a correct matter. Except that the difference between the one who is calling to bid'ah and those who are the seniors and those who are the seniors in what is right and those who have fallen into errors with regard to their ijtihad and with regard to their ta'weel but they are aiders and supporters of the sunnah and they are servants and they are custodians of the books of sunnah in truth and the haddad bi tamtisihi li ahl sunnah wa tatawaluhu alayhim amthal bin bas wa ibn wa albani rahimahum allah ta'ala falam yuslim min lisanihi ahl sunnah as for this al haddad with their abuse and disrespect towards the likes of Ibn, Ibn Baz, Ruthaymain, Al-Bani, Rahmanullah Ta'ala, that none of them are safe, and none of the people of the Sunnah are safe from his tongue. The people of the Sunnah were not safe from their tongue. 
وسمى من لسانه أحد الأحزاب والأفكار المنعرفة التي ظهرت في مصر. While those people of deviation and those people of corruption and partisanship manifested in Egypt, they are safe from his tongue. قد قام الشيخ ربيع الهادي المدخلي حفظه الله تعالى with a book that is called a رد عليه في كتابه the book that he is refuting him called مجاز مجاز فات العداد. So there are very distinct characteristics of the Haddadiyya. Before we finish, I'd like to read a few of them, or some of them. As it is a need that this distorted methodology, this methodology of destruction, it should be reviewed and it should be understood. This individual who was in Egypt, who was, like I said, was in Saudi until he was expelled from there. Until he was expelled from that place. And that was because of his deviant methodology. This group, and its, its name comes from an uh, Egypt, uh, Egyptian individual, Khan Muqim in the Mamak al Arabi of Saudi who used to live in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, before he was expelled from there, removed from Saudi kicked out because of his inhiraf, because of his distortions. His name, Mahmoud al Haddad. لم يلتقى هذا المتعالم معمول الحداد بعالم من علماء العصر الشيخ الألباني والشيخ بن باس والشيخ بن عثنين والشيخ النجمي والشيخ محمد عمان الجامي والشيخ فوزان والشيخ الوحيدان وغيرهم من كبار المشايخ من شيخ He did not meet up with any of the senior and high power scholars of his time the likes of Albani the likes of Sheikh Ben Baz, the, the likes of Sheikh Uthanein, the likes of Sheikh Najmi, the likes of Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami, Sheikh Salih Fuzan, Sheikh Rohaydan, Rahim Allah Ta'ala min Amwatihim, Ahabahum Allah Ta'ala min Ahyan. Allah's mercy on the ones who have passed from them, and Allah preserve the ones who are living. Min Kibar al Mashayikh, from the senior scholars. He did not sit with any of them. It is not known that he sat with any of them. Although he was there during their time, and not only was he there, he was in their place at the time that they were around. He is not known to have studied with any of them. Although attributing to himself and relying upon himself, as though he was manifesting salafia and knowledge, he caused murkiness for some of the youth. He caused murkiness for some of the youth. From these, and these are many, مسائل, in which he is affected by or being having effect on is the, the mistakes of Albani he pointed. The mistakes of Albani and Aqida, and other than that. And he is the author of a book that was a thick book entitled Al Khamis. In this, he also thought that most of the Muslims are upon, or the general masses of Muslims are upon Irja. Irja, brothers and sisters, is one of the earliest of the innovations. Irja are the ones who separate deeds from faith, stating that the belief is a matter of pronouncement and something inside, and that. Righteousness and evil deeds have no effect on Iman. Contrary to Ahl-Sunnah al 
who believe that Iman is Qawli wal Amal. Qawli wal Amal. Qawli bil Lisan wal Nataq bil Lisan wal Amal bil Jawarah. In the heart. Al Irja is from the earliest of the innovations. He accuses Al Bani ta'ala of this. واتهم الإمام البربهاري رحمه الله تعالى بالتهمة الإرجاء صريحا. Likewise, he accuses or he says that الإمام الإمام البربهاري رحمه الله تعالى with the accusation of إرجاء clear إرجاء he says. واتهم الشيخ الإسلام تيمير رحمه الله تعالى بتهوين الشأن الإرجاء accusing الشيخ الإسلام تيمير رحمه الله تعالى of trivializing and taking lightly the affair of إرجاء. لأنه عد الخلاف مع مرجع الفقهاء أكثره لفظي because he refused to refer to them most of the time other than referring to them as مرجع الفقهاء which you can probably say the closest to the Sunnah so this is one of the problems of him وبالغ الحداد في ابتهامه لأمة الإسلام so he was excessive the Haddad in his accusations against the Imams of the religion of Islam فَطَعْنَ فِي تَحَاوِيَةٍ Abusing, as I mentioned earlier. تَحَاوِيَةٍ وَشَارَحَهَا إِبْنِ أَبِي الْعُزَّ الْحَنَفِي And the commentary, إِبْنِ أَبِي الْعُزَّ الْحَنَفِي وَمَنْ يُوْصَ بِهَا مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْمُعَصِلِينَ بِالدَّعْوَى أَنَّ فِيهَا بِلَايَ الْعَظِيمَةِ وَإِرْجَاءٍ وَتَجَاهَمٍ that it has great atrocities, that it has irja, that it has tajahum, and that it has logic and philosophy, and that it has lightness. Knowing that most of this taken from the speech of Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah and his student, Ibn Qayyim Rahmah wa Ta'ala كما لا يخفى على طالب العلم just as it is not hidden from no student of knowledge وكان تكلم الحداد في مشايخ المدينة الحداد also speaks against the مشايخ المدينة ولم يعلم عنه الكلام في قطبية وسرورية ولا في زعيمهم سيد القطب سيد القطب and we did not see him speaking against قطبية وسرورية or their leader, Sayyid Qudr. بَلْ بَلَغَ بِهِ الْعَمَرُ أَنْ يُطْعَمْ بِعُلَمَاءِ الْبِلَادِ الْحَرْمَيْنِ فِي وَقْتِ الْأَزْمَةِ الْخَلِيجِ وَيَصِفُهُمْ بِعُلَمَاءِ السُّوءِ وَعَبِيدِ السُّلْطَةِ Abusing the scholars of the rest, the place of the two Harmains, the two, har the, 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 the two sanctuaries at the time and period of this uh, conflict of Khalid, the Gulf, Describing the scholars as the scholars of evilness and the servants of the rulers. Describing the scholars as evil and describing them as the slaves to the rulers. وكان مما يقرره الحداد أيضا عدم التفريق بين المبتدعة والداعي إلى بدعته وبين غير الداعي. Also it is known from Haddadi that they make no distinction between the innovator who calls to it and the person who has fallen into some bid'ah by way of error. Like the one who is not calling to it, but he has fallen into it. عن عن السلف الصالح كالشوكاني وابن حجر وأمثالهم. and he made no distinction between the innovators such as Sayyid Qutb and the likes of the scholars who have fallen into errors although they were known for good they were known for tremendous works in the support and the aiding of the Sunnah and the refuting of innovation and the spreading of knowledge that is from the narrations by way of the Salaf such as Shokani and Ibn Hajr, and that like I mentioned before. 
على هؤلاء العلماء الذين وقعوا في شيء من البدعة ويحذر منهم ومن كتبهم. He also believed that it was impermissible to make tarahim. رحم الله تعالى. He believed that it was not allowable to make tarahim upon those scholars who have fallen into some bid'ah. And he warns against their books. And he warns against their books. Brothers, there are certain ahammat, ahamm al-sifat al-hadadiyya. There are some of the most important characteristics and traits of the hadadiyya. In the hadadiyya, firq al-dal. Lewis said, kathir min al-nas. Many people are confused about it. This division adding to its danger and its filth and corruption. That's Allah Azza wa Jalla Many people know nothing about them. Even I said, some of the brothers who are involved in da'wah, and I mentioned to them, he's still living. Did you know that? He was with their sheikh and their sheikh. And their sheikh sponsored him while he was in Medina. They said, I didn't know that. So I was surprised. I was surprised that people engaged in da'wah, not to mention people who are not necessarily involved in the shi'un of da'wah, not involved in the affairs of da'wah, didn't know that he was still living and where this term came from. Which should be a lesson for us in itself. That many times we're making intisab, these titles, or tasneef, and these categorizing people into categories without having any understanding of it. That this is an injustice. This is an injustice. This is ihanat al ilm. This is taking knowledge lightly, using technical terminologies and not knowing where they came from, what their origins are, this is not the likes. There's a certain amount that people are allowed to mention about a basketball game, maybe, about carpentry, about this or about that. But regarding the religion, we are not allowed to speak about it without knowledge. The brother mentioned the verse, mentioning the severity of speaking about Allah without ilm, that this is something that is what? After shirk, meaning in severity. It is impermissible for everyone to try and get a word in edgewise, using terminologies, not knowing what its origin is, categorizing people, labeling people without knowing the person and what he is labeling them, what he's labeling with. This is not the likes. Just as it is astonishing that many people with these traits of the Haddad are accusing others of Haddad here. La ilaha illallah. What scholar is safe from these individuals? Which scholar is safe from these individuals? None. Or in the last 10 years, how many scholars have they made is caught upon? How many scholars have been downed by way of these individuals? Everyone that was their shape is no longer their shape. We have basketball players, lame basketball players, saying that dude, referring to the mashaykh, that guy, calling by his first name as though he has appeared to you. SubhanAllah. So it is no wonder that these reckless children are going to abuse some of us. Some of us lonely individuals, it should be expected. Why would anybody have to call me amazed at some of this recklessness that is going on? We anticipated it. We anticipated it. They disrespect every senior, every scholar, every student. Is there any, is there any student safe from them? Of course not. Are there any scholars that are safe from them? I think they have one or two that they're still holding and hanging on to their names. Not hanging on to the shape. Not hanging on to the akhlaq of the shape. Not hanging on to the minhaj of the shape. Rather, just the name. Just using the name. 
No shaykh has been saved from them. Where did that come from? This is the manhaj of the Hadadi. This is the methodology of Hadadiyah, making no distinction between virtue and loneliness. Everyone is trumped up in the same. The same disrespect, brothers and sisters. This is how much of the Hadadiyah. These are from the most prevalent of those characteristics and traits of the Hadadiyah. That's what Allah is wajalla, al-afu, salama, fi-dunya, wa salama for doing your ashram. In the Hadadiyah, for the Dala, brothers and sisters, this Hadadiyah is a deviant sect, a sect astray. They are astray. But they make talabbas. They cause confusion as though they are upon the Sunnah. They try to give the impression of Salafia. But they are in reality. In reality, they are upon Hadadiyya. And again, you don't have to sign up. If you are following the methodology of the Ikhwan, you don't have to be a student of the president of the Ikhwan inside of Egypt. If you have their methodology, we say Ikhwani. He's influenced by the Ikhwan. If you are revolting against the Muslim rulers and deeming the blood of the believers lawful, we have to say this is a takfiri, kawarij. You don't have to be an active member of a particular organization signed up. If you are carrying on like that, then it is more than fair to say he has that with him. She has that with her. We seek refuge with Allah as wajalla from walking on our tongues. We are calling someone Haddadi and behaving like the forerunners of Haddadiyya. So this is their, this is the sifat, this is the sifat. They ask many of the scholars about them and what is prevalent about them and the same answer will come. Haddadiyya. This is the question. What is the prevalent characteristics of the Hadadiyya? And that they are called this because of their al ghalfa al ghalfa wal fadaha Their harshness and their roughness. Wa hiya allati naha Allahu anha wa amtanna ala rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bidudiha. This harshness and this roughness is what Allah Ta'ala had prohibited from. What Allah Ta'ala had forbidden. And that we should be thankful for our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for being against it. For bima rahmatun min Allahi lanta. Lanta lahum walau kunta fadlan gharir wal qalb lan fadlu min hawlik. Fa'afu anhum wa astaghfir lahum wa shawirhum fi amr. Fa idha azmat فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين. Like Allah Ta'ala says in Ali Imran. For, for that mercy from Allah Azza wa Jalla, the softness that you had for them, the leniency that you had for them, and had you been rough and harsh hearted, they would have done what, Muhammad? They would have turned away from you. They would have turned away from the Prophet Sallallahu if he was rough and hard, hard-hearted. The Messenger of Allah, Allah is telling him about this mercy of having lightness and easiness or they would have turned away from him. So forgive them and seek forgiveness for them and seek counsel with them in the affair. And when you have firm determination about it, then put your trust upon Allah Ta'ala. Surely Allah loves those who place their trust on him. As Allah Ta'ala mentioned in Ali Amran, فَإِذَا أَخْتَرَ أَقُوكَ قَطْعًا So if your brother has made a manifest error, فَالْوَاجِبَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ تَكُونَ بِهِ رَحِيمًا It's upon you to be merciful to him. وَتَأْخُذُهُ بِالْلَطْفِ وَتَبَيِّنْ لَهُ بِالْلَطْفِ بِالْلَطْفِ وَتَبَيِّنْ لَهُ بِعِلْمٍ وَتَبَيِّنْ لَهُ بِالشَّفْقِ وَتَظْهَرْ لَهُ الْوَدِّ وَالْمُحَبَّةِ وَأَنَّكَ إِنَّمَا تَقُولَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ بَابٍ مُحَبَّ لَهُ 
من باب محبة الله لا من باب الاستعلاء عليه ولا من باب التشفية ولا من باب التعالم ولا من باب التقريع والتأنيب لا إنما من باب التوجيه ومن باب النصح ومن باب اللطف ومن باب محبة الخير له ونحن ذلك فمن الغلط هذا So if your brother errs, it's upon you to be merciful to him, to take him with lotuf, and to clarify to him with lotuf, and to clarify with him to him with knowledge, and to clarify with him with concern, and to manifest to him love. And it is love that indeed you speak with. And it is from the angle of love for him, not from the angle of haughtiness, not from the angle of arrogance, not from the angle of degradation, scolding, taunting. No, it is only from the angle of giving direction, from the angle of sincere advisement, from the angle of softness, from the angle of love and good for him, loving good for him, and the likes of that, not harshness. al hadadiyun بالغوا في تعظيم الآثار إلى أن تركوا الأخبار الواردة عن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. Another trait of the Hadadiyun is that they do what? They are excessive and extreme. They give high regard for certain آثار abandoning those narrations on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Certain obscure narratives they take over the narrations of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. What type of order is that? Even if we say evidence, we always start with the book and the sunnah. And everything else is judged based on that. So if there is an adhar that comes later on, and it is not totally in line in collaboration with the book and the sunnah, then we know automatically that one cannot supersede. If it elaborates, if it is a collaboration, if it is in line with the book and the sunnah, Okay. If it is something in there, maybe, maybe not. No, we leave that. We leave that. Well, at the end, they take and give superiority over these afar. Abandoning the akhbar or wari that from the Prophet Abandoning the akhbar or They go excessive. They go beyond the bounds. They abandon narrations. They abandon the narrations from whom? Sayyid al-Anbiya alayhi salatu salam. The master of the prophets. They take these athar, obscuring their meanings, and abandon the narrations of the master of the prophets. That means, oh, this story, that story, this story, that story. Quran, hadith is here. It is murkiness, at least. It is not totally in collaboration with the hadith. They abandon the sunnahs. They abandon the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu for their obscure, for the obscure adhar that supports their view and their positions. That's Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of Afiyah Salama. فَأَنْتَ تَقُولُ لَهُ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ قَالَ فُلَانٌ You tell them the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they say, so-and-so said, Fulan said. You say the Messenger of Allah said, they say the Messenger of Allah said, they said, so and so said. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Qawlu Fulan innama taba'a. Innama, innama huwa taba'a qawlu al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is only the following of the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is only this following of the, of the statement of the scholars, even the scholars. Even the Sahabas, even the scholars amongst the Sahabas, brothers and sisters, it's not a hujjah in itself. It's not dalil in itself. The statement of a Sahaba, the, ind the independent statement of a Sahaba is not an evidence. How about anyone who comes after them? How about someone who comes after them? If the Sahabas disagreed on something, we don't take the statement as an evidence. We don't take their statement if it was something that they didn't agree with together. 
The independent view and position of a Sahaba is not a delil. Not a delil. Let's get back to the basic, brothers and sisters. Let's get back to the basics. We claim Salafia. It's forced to adhere to Salafia. The first thing you have to see is, and you have to mention, you have to say, you have to refer to the Book and the Sunnah when you say Salafia. You have to say Book and Sunnah, the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi But they don't put anyone else's words ahead of that. As Sheikh Mubbir Rahman says, they don't have any other imam. They don't have any other imam. Over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi there is no other imam. <coughs> Let's put things in a proper perspective, brothers. Let's put things in a proper perspective. And the Haddadiyah, brothers and sisters, this is from the, from, from the things that are most famous about them, or infamous about them. That they are disrespectful towards scholars. Tamam and ulama sunnah. Completely the scholars of the sunnah. Albani and the home murji. They call Albani a murji. Sheikh bin Baz Muhammad al Jahil they call. They call Sheikh bin Baz Muhammad al Jahil. They say they don't know the books of the sunnah. They say he doesn't know the books of sunnah. Sheikh al Islam. نقض الإجماع وقالف المذهب السلف يكون شيخ الإسلام تيمي رحمة الله of going against إجماع of opposing the مذهب of the سلف وهذا ما قص أخذ من هذه الأمور هذه كلها أن سمعت سمعتها من رؤوسهم سواء من فريد ولا من الحداد ولا من من هو دون الحداد من رؤوس هؤلاء في ذلك الحين فالشاهد لا يعترفون بعالم أبدا they are not acknowledged as now scholar of scholarly peoples at all ever شيخهم الحداد ومتكلمه فريد and his spokesman فريد وموزعه عبد اللطيف باشمير في الدنيا كلها this is it for them. They have no scholars behind them in their positions that they take. They have no scholars supporting them in their allegations and, and accusations against Ahmed Sunnah Jamaat. So brothers, beware. Beware of this ideology and this philosophy. Beware of it. Wherever you hear it, beware of that. That it is not by way of the people of knowledge, rather it is by way of this muta'alam, the one who is acting like a scholar, who is faking like a scholar. And we know men ulama Somebody dressing like the ulama, sounding like the ulama, they're not from them by virtue of their act. There are many people like that. Our brother, he divided the categories of jahl into jahl muraqab and jahl basit. This is how it is understood. But you have another type, and that is the one that makes tajahid. They pretend like they don't know. They pretend as though they don't know. We say, for example, you know, Sheikh so-and-so, there was a lot of good in him. And a lot of scholars praised him. And some of these pretenders, they say, like who? I said, amazing, I don't know. He said, like who? Are you that serious? Did you want to push your agenda that serious? Did you not want to acknowledge anything? No better. And he says, like who? What scholar? Praise him. I said, what scholar didn't praise him? Which one didn't praise him? He was praised by all of the scholars of the religion. All of the Amma of Sunnah. All of the scholars of Mu'tabirin. Mu'tabideen. Those scholars that are relied upon, all of them praised him. You're not going to acknowledge that? Are you that deaf? Are you that stuck on trying to discredit and to make this part of that shaykh? Then you hear that Allah Ta'ala says that no good of any door of good is going to go lost. It's never going to get lost. Why are you trying to lose it? 
Why are you trying to cover up? So we have also a tajahid. A tajahid is somebody acting like he don't know, and he does know. And there are people like that. A tajahid, acting like he doesn't know. You know and you don't want to act like you don't know. And just because a person is not formally educated, like most people, they haven't been studying with a scholar, failed with them, did good with them, didn't do good with them, was just there to buy kufis and thobes and pretended that he was with them. If a person took his time out to study and his money to study and go and study, he is head and shoulders above the pretender. Just because of his intention. So we don't have the authority to be disrespecting people just off the hip. Just someone saying something ill on someone, you're sharing that sin if you carry that. You're sharing in that filth, in the spreading of that filth. Spread some khair. Spread some cooperation. Guard your tongue. Many people are afraid of these meetings. These type of meetings here, they were afraid of it. They were afraid for me. SubhanAllah. Pull me to the side. Ah, Sheikh, you don't have to, uh, the word was validate. You don't have to validate your position on this platform or that platform. It's already known what you're on. It's already known. This is no validation session. This is a cooperation. This is a cooperation between the people of the Sunnah. This is utilizing whatever Allah gives us to make it swap between the Muslims at our hands to make to do so. It is for us to make it swap between ourselves every opportunity that we can and to use what to do so? Everything that we can. If it is money, if it is our seniority, if it is our strength, and whatever it is, we should use it for Islam. It's as though we didn't hear what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says. Al-Islam bayn al-akhwain khayra min qiyami wa siyam. It's better than standing in the night prayer and fasting in the day. Islam, reform, rectification, betterment. So these gatherings here, We should get used to it. We should have more of them. And we, ahead of all of that, we should be sincere. When we drove, when we walked, when we caught the bus, when we made the phone call, when we put the flyer up, when we took the flyer down, when we added a name, when we took the name off, it's for us to be sincere in every move toward these type of gatherings. To be sincere for the sake of Allah Azza wa for the pleasure of Allah And all of these attempts, these weak attempts that are being made, this is the religion of Allah Allah Ta'ala don't need none of us to defend it. Allah can replace all of us and have a whole nother people to do so. And it will take nothing from Allah or add nothing to Allah Ta'ala either way. It's gonna take nothing from Allah Rather it's to our benefit that we're in the business of making Islam and that we're not in the business of dividing and splitting. There's certain things in the religion that requires us to split from certain people. There's certain things that the religion requires us to not cooperate with. And that is ithm, what it would Sins, division, transgression. As for good or taqwa, it's upon us to try to cooperate. It's best of our abilities. It's upon us to cooperate. We don't have to know each other personally and all this other stuff here. Cooperate. Have a husn of fun. I don't know him personally, but I'm not thinking anything negative about him because I don't have no reason to do that. He's older, he's younger, he's from here, he's from there. All these other things here, I'm going to sort that out. But the first thing that we have is a good thought for our brothers. It's a good thought. Remove all this negativity. And that doesn't mean that we should be some people that are taking lightly matters of extreme, matters of importance, matters of severity. We're not taking them lightly, but we are lightening up on the believers. 
We are given an opportunity. We not only want to cooperate with the Salafis specifically, but we want to give the people that aren't Salafi a chance to come to Salafi. If we're all snubbing our noses up and acting all arrogant and acting all holy like we're better than someone, how do they even attempt to, how do we give them an opportunity to get near us? We don't even get along with each other. How does the outsider get, a, get an opportunity? Brother, this is our manner. It's a favor from Allah as we tell that we are enjoying the sunnah. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted, brothers. There are many people that were on the sunnah that are no longer on the sunnah. There are many people that were on the sunnah that are no longer on the sunnah. I'm not talking about no parents and all this other stuff here. I ain't seen them at Juma. I'm talking about they're not on the sunnah at all. They're not on the sunnah. They're not making da'wah. They're not learning deen. They're not studying. They're not giving da'wah. They're running from that. We gotta be thankful to Allah, you brothers and sisters. All of us are not required to be students of knowledge and scholars and all that, but it's upon us to back their play. It's upon us to support them and to back them. And we ain't backing them just with no check, but getting money up as well. We're backing them by sitting in the class, we're doing our part. They're teaching, we're learning. They're teaching. And we're learning. We're not challenging them. We're not trying to put them on the spot. We're not trying to pump them up. And we're not trying to make them step out of their out of their abilities, out of their circle of abilities. Make good relation with the people of the Sunnah, particularly the students of knowledge. Connect yourself to them, because they are the liaison between the regular society and the scholars of the religion of Islam. They connect us with the people of knowledge. They give us direction. They tell us. Tell he. They tell us how to worship Allah as we tell them. They inform us about what is not allowed in the religion of Islam. It's for us to take care of them, brothers and sisters. Take care of our masajid. Don't cause humiliation to our imams, to our du'at, that they have to beg you for something. Don't cause the humiliation. Sheikh Muqbal Rahman Ta'ala, he has a book called The Masa. Now that one I know is not going to get translated by many. <laughs> it's an easy one to translate. It's an easy translate. It's not that many books. It's not that many pages. And it's just narration after narration. But in the beginning of the book, he explains why he had to go into that. He said because there were some students of his, or some students who claimed to be his, that went to different Gulf Arab countries where all the money was at. The rich uh, Gulf countries. And they said, they went to masjid, they went to different places, and said, we, we need money for cars. We need money for uh, Marquez. We need money for, you know, schools. The Sheikh, he did not want this, that they went to those places and begged for money in his name. He did not allow for that, but he did not say that it's impermissible to ask. He said that the people who are doing this as like a hustle, excuse the expression, because he mentioned the, the, the time that it's permissible to beg in that same book and the time that it is impermissible. And then he said also, and I'll never forget this, he says, when these students have to ask for help, and when they have to ask for transportation, and when they have to ask, and they have to ask, and imams have to ask, he said this was ihanat al deen wa ahmed. It is a humiliation. It's humiliation to the deen and the people of the deen. That is humiliation. Let's take care of our misajid, let's take care of our students, Let's take care of the dawah without someone having to beg us for that. Let's take care of it. Like some of the sellers used to say, I like to give all of the sadaqah that I'm going to give before I have to see the humiliation on the face of my brother that needs. Let's give. What about the narration when they came to the Prophet and said, Ya yeah, Rasulullah, here. And other ones said, Ya yeah, Rasulullah, here. Here, this is what I'm giving in the path of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu accepted from some, and he didn't accept from others. They offered, the Prophet Sallallahu kept telling him, no, give it to your family. He said, I have enough, take this much. The Prophet Sallallahu no, give it to your family, give it to your clan, give it to your people. When are we gonna be like that? When we offer, instead of making someone beg us. Abu Bakr Siddiq, when there was a need for the Muslims, he offered the Prophet Sallallahu everything he had. And Abu Bakr was so heavy, the Prophet took it. And Umar bin Khattab said, half of everything I have. 
We have to beg people to give us a couple of dollars for this and a couple of dollars for that. This is shameful, brothers. We sold it to people of the Sunnah. Don't we love the Sunnah? Or we, or we just like it? I don't really love it. I like it. I just like it a little bit. It ain't worth that much to me. I'll spend a little time for the Sunnah here. I'll spend a couple of hours for the Sunnah here, but I don't like it that much. The things that we care about, we spend on it. The things that are dear to us, we spend on it. We spend for it. We support it. We make sure it's okay. So it's for us, inshallah, to be thankful to Allah Azza wa These gatherings are beautiful gatherings. Nobody's in here to, to, to backbite, to slander, and to lie. We're here to raise Allah Azza wa word and to lower every other word that goes against it. We're here to unite the Muslims and not to divide them. We're here to call the people to knowledge and not drive them away from the circle of knowledge. We're here for love and not hate and animosity and hatred. Where are those people who love for the sake of Allah is The Prophet Allah said, where are the people who love for the sake of Allah is These are the ones under the throne of Allah is They love for the sake of Allah is These are the people Allah is going to protect on that day when there'll be no shade but it's shade. So remember that, brothers and sisters. This is my uh, few words I had to say. I had more to say. But again, I don't want to hog the, uh, the microphone. We have our beautiful young brothers that are coming here to visit us. And the other thing is that it is for us to be hospitable for our brothers. Prophet says, Who does not take care of his guests with hospitality? They're not from us. They're not from us. The Prophet says, you're not from us. All of us from Philly, Southwest, North, whatever part it is, it's for you to take care of these brothers. They came from Jersey and all these other places. They came from Jersey and all these, and they come to take our girls. <laughs> they came here to visit their brothers for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. They came here for this dean of ours. It's for us to take care of them, to make sure that they're all right, that they're safe, they get where they're going and coming, and that they're all right, that they're taken, they're taken, taken care of while they're under our care, it's an amana. That's an amana. And we ought to keep up with that amana. It's a trust from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Whoever does not take care of their guests is not from us, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says. Our brothers come from jail and stuff like that, and they come to the masjid and they're happy to be at the masjid. We have to let them know they're welcome. It's not our masjid, it's your masjid. We gotta let them know. Let them know that they're welcome. Like some of these other individuals are spreading lies and filth. Even before people get out of jail, they're spreading lies in the jails, I don't know. Spreading lies. Restricting the brothers. Don't go here, don't go there, all this other stuff here. Don't go to these places, don't go to those places. Let me tell you something Sheikh Saleh Bouzan said about people who are doing that. He said they are hurting themselves. If they're telling people not to go somewhere that's okay to go, he said they're hurting no one but themselves. They're hurting no one but themselves. So there's nothing to worry about. Wallahi, the people are making efforts against us. They're making efforts against us, and we're becoming more beloved to the people. <laughs> the more they lie on us, the more the people love us. That's what Allah is going to tell them. Allah is going to take care of his slaves. So as far as inshallah, in the future, I, I, I tend to uh, have meetings with the brothers and keep in contact with them, and that we, inshallah, should have more of these. We should have more of these. This, this is very important. And it's for the meeting of the needs of the Muslims. Not for wearing your hard shoes and hunting for a woman or a man. We ain't going there. Don't go in there. It's for what? It's for the raising of the word of Allah as well, meeting the needs of the believers.